There are so many newborn essential items on my list, so let's get straight into it and let's start with nappy changes. So of course you are going to need some nappies. We managed to get loads of free nappies before our baby was born, so when she was born we used all the free ones and then we started buying the ones that we thought she'd like, so we bought size one Pampers and we have stayed with those the whole time. You are then going to need wet wipes. We ended up with the Fred and Flo from Tesco's, these are the ones that are best for us. I mean, we got a lot of the free water wipes ones, but they're like three pounds for one packet, which is ridiculous. So that's just too much money. You will then need somewhere to put those dirty nappies. And we've got the Angel Care nappy bin here. I've got a review for it if you want to check it out. If you are out and about, you will need nappy bags. I thought these were going to be useless, but actually I use them all the time. And I'm so glad I have them. And this is a bag of 200 and she's now five and a half months and we've still got loads, despite the fact that we use them all the time. So. These are really, really good. They're just from Eco Wave World ones. Um, I just got them off Amazon. We keep a hand sanitizer next to our changing station because, you know, I don't need to explain that one to you. Then we also keep a teeny tiny muslin there as well for the inevitable milk spit ups because they happen all the time. You will then need somewhere to change your baby. And of course you can just put a towel down and put them on the bed or the sofa, wherever you want to on the floor. Um, but you might find that you like a changing mat. So we've got, we've got a couple. So we've got this big hefty sturdy one that we got from Mamas and Papas that we actually got for free. So that's why we have such a big one. We also have our day to day out and about the house one. So this one came free with the changing bag, which I'll show you later. And it just has a little pillow because obviously babies need a, need a cushioning when they're being changed. And it's got a space for nappies, a space for wet wipes. And this one has a zip on the back and that's where hopefully, yes, we keep nappy bags. You'll find that changing mats come free with quite a lot of things. So we got one with the bedside crib and we got one with the changing mat. And as I said, this one was free. Maybe hold off on buying one until you've bought the rest of your stuff just in case you get one for free. In terms of lotions, potions, and everything that we've got, the only thing we've actually used is Bepanthin, and we use that for nappy rashes. We've also been recommended this Metunanium, this one, <laughs> because we haven't used it. You may be able to tell that by my pronunciation, but apparently this one's really, really good for nappy rash as well. We got the Bepanthin for free, as well as like Sudocrem, so they're on in our box next to our nappy changing station, just so we can grab what we need to, but so far, Bepanthin for the win. So nappy change is done. Let's talk about cleaning the baby. So we just use cotton wool balls and water and that was it. Um, before she could have a bath because of the umbilical cord, we would just do her face or the bits and bobs that needed to be done just with cotton wool. And then when she could have a bath, we would just put her in the bath with just water again and sploosh her from there. We do have lots of little like bath time bits and bobs when the time comes, but we haven't used them yet. So I don't want to recommend anything that I haven't used. So at the moment we're still just using water because she can't go anywhere on her own. She can't crawl around so she's not dirty yet, but in like a month that will change. We decided to buy the Angel Care bath the seat type thing it's like a little colander that they sit in she still fits in it now I think it's meant to fit up to about six months and um, we just put her in that in the bathtub and then we wash her with um, we used a plastic cup at first so you don't need to buy anything for that um, but then we did buy a whale toy splooshia because she enjoys looking at it, but otherwise you don't need any fancy bits and bobs. If you don't have a bath and you wanna make your own, they've got these little like bathtub, baby bathtubs um, that you can fill up and use instead, or you have a sink. We've also done sink baths. They work perfectly well. To finish off bath time, we put her in a little hooded towel so she doesn't get too cold and then wrap her up as snug as can be. And then we get on with changing and the rest of the day. In terms of medical bits and bobs, we have a little thermometer, so this one goes under her arm. We have actually had to use it a few times already. It's a little bit tricky because trying to get a newborn to squeeze their armpit and hold it and not wriggle around and let it go is, is really difficult. So you might find a better version, but this is the one that we go for. We have used it lots. For her first jazz, we needed to give her cowpaw. We did not know this in advance, so we were told at the appointment that we needed to go and get some cowpaw and give it to her. So we had to pop out really quickly and get some. Um, just make sure that you get some the right age range for your baby. If you get Cowpole brand, you get a little syringe with it. If you don't get the Cowpole brand, I have now learned this, that you don't get the syringe with it. So decide in advance whether you want that syringe or not and uh, how much you wanna pay for it. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing in the world that I didn't think would be useful, but actually is. This is a little thumble. Thumble? I think that's what it's called. So basically, it's a nail file that you put on your thumb and then you can file their nails down. 
I didn't realise how soon we would need this. It was kind of almost instantly that we needed to use this little thumble thing. Obviously you can get different, different types of nail files. Some people bite their baby's nails, but um, this is the one that we use, but I was really surprised that we needed it within like the first week or two. So maybe see how your baby gets on. We just got these from Amazon and they came like the next day. So, you know, you can buy those at the time. In terms of being out and about the house with your baby, there are a few different things that you may want or need depending on your lifestyle and what you want to work for you. So if you plan on giving birth in the hospital and then driving home, you will already need a car seat and a car seat base. We actually bought a bundle with loads of things together. So we got our push chair, bassinet, car seat, car seat base. We got a foot muff for the push chair. It came with a rain cover and a, um, and a cup holder. I think that was everything. So we got those all together. So if you are thinking about buying loads of things, it might be worth looking into different bundles and see what options you can get because it will be much, much cheaper that way. If you want individual push chairs, this is the individual one that we bought. It was separate to the bundle. We bought it for traveling and that's a lightweight fold down one. But again, do research into the particular push chair because it depends if you're gonna travel more, do long journeys, short journeys as to what you actually want. And separate to that, you might want a way to carry your baby. So we use this Kia Babies Wrap. Um, we used this for, I think, the first six weeks. So this was really, really lovely because when she was a newborn, she was so small, teeny tiny ball, and she would just face in and snuggle in, and it was winter, so it was nice to be able to dress her, wrap her up in this, keep her in my coat, and keep her really, really snug and really warm, and it felt so secure. Now she's a bit older, we use the Bjorn Move, but I'm glad, as much as that is also suitable for newborns, I'm glad I didn't use that for a newborn. Um, I'm glad I bought this, even though we don't use this anymore at five and a half months, this was definitely worth it for us. It was just so lovely to be able to carry her and like snuggle in and hold her that way. For carrying all your bits and bobs, you can get a changing bag. So this is the one that we bought. I think this was the current bestseller on Amazon at the time. I'm not actually sure that I like it. Um, and that's where we got the free changing mat with. The reason I don't think I like it is because it's so big and bulky, it doesn't actually fit underneath our prams, so I have to take all the bits out anyway. So I've packed all the nappies, etc., and clothes in small cube packing things, and I've just left those in the boots so I can just pick and pick what I need at the time. So what I would say is to use an existing bag for the first journey or two out of the house, put the stuff in there, see how big a bag you think you need, and if you actually do need a changing bag, because you might just want to use one of your bags, and then once you've used it, you know the size that you need. So as much as I don't regret buying this one because we use this one as our swim bag, I do wish I'd got a different one instead. In terms of entertaining the baby, I thought we were gonna need loads and loads and loads of stuff. But actually, she was such a small little ball of smush that she didn't do anything or interact with anything because she couldn't see anything and she was so little. Um, but the first things that she did interact with were, number one, a crinkly book. So anything black and white, she loved at first. So this one, she loves just sort of hearing it, feeling it. Um, also for the crinkles, this foil blanket. So you might find that you get them for free anyway in a first aid kit. So check out your first aid kit. Obviously, you know, I'm not suggesting you take it out of your first aid kit, but uh, if it's in there, um, you can test it out. You can also buy the baby sensory version of this, which is probably like 20 pounds more. I'm joking, it's not that much. Um, but she loved this. Your baby can lay on their back and play with it and crinkle it or tummy time when they're loving tummy time. If they ever love tummy time, we are not loving tummy time um, and they can crinkle it. And then we got this tummy time book. We got this when we registered her birth so again we got this for free and this is just a little book that stands up so when she does tummy time she can kind of try and lift her head up varying degrees of success. You can obviously get as many storybooks as you want. When she was maybe three months, that's when she started to reach and grab for stuff. And I really felt like she was interacting with us a little bit more. So in terms of stuff like this, you might not need it to start with, but it is nice to have little books for them. And I can highly, highly, highly recommend crinkly things as well, because crinkly things, they're just gonna love for such a long time. So let's talk about feeding the baby, which let's face it, is the most important thing. So I am currently breastfeeding. I have express using a pump and we have bottle fed. I haven't formula fed, so I'm not an expert on that, but hopefully some of the things I'm going to say are useful for you as well. If you are breastfeeding, I would highly recommend investing in some nursing bras, nursing tops and nursing PJs. I have yet to find any that are nice. I have functional ones, but I have yet to find any that I'm like, yeah, this is really nice. This makes me feel good. So if you find any nice ones, please let me know. There are a couple of different styles of bras and of tops. So this one just unclips here. Um, I've got some that you just 
pull down. In terms of tops, you have some that you lift up, zip down. My favorite tops are pretty much like vest tops that you can just pull down. It's just much, much easier. You might find that some of your existing shirts and vests already do the trick, so you don't need to buy as many things. And I do see them as transitional clothes, so I want to spend my money on clothes that I'm gonna like for a really, really long time rather than uh, buying, you know, fancy breastfeeding tops that I'm not gonna wear forever. So um, maybe that's why I can't find any nice ones. So in terms of the pump that I use, I use the LB Breast Pump and I've done a review on it here in case you wanna check it out. The bottles that we use are MAM bottles and we got three for free when I was pregnant, so they're the ones that we've used. If you do manage to get any for free, I would hold off buying any until you know that your baby likes that particular type of bottle because you don't wanna waste loads of money and then find that they don't take to that bottle. But the MAM ones we got for free and they are self-sterilizing in the microwave, which is amazing, so it's a really quick, easy thing to do. If you have bottles or anything you need to sterilize, like this pump needs to be sterilized. We just use a Tupperware box, like a big one we already have in the cupboard, and then we use the Milton sterilizing tablets, and one of those tablets lasts for 24 hours, and you just wash up whatever you need to wash up, pop it in there in the sterilized water for 15 minutes at least, get it out, let it dry, and you're good to go, and you can use that water for 24 hours, like as many things in there as you need to. So we try and kind of time it right, so if we're doing a load of bottles and stuff, we pop them all in there at the same time and then get them out so I don't constantly have to like refresh the water every single time. Mm. Because I'm breastfeeding I also need to supplement with vitamin D so do check with your midwife or health visitor before doing this um, but we were told we have to so this just goes on your nipple or on the end of the finger and then you can pop it in their mouths. If you use formula you don't need this because it's already in your formula so this is just um, just if you are breastfeeding. And in terms of feeding your baby in comfort, we were gifted this pillow, which is really, really nice. It just goes around, yep. It just goes around your waist. That was probably a little bit too high. Oh no, maybe just goes around your waist and then the baby can lay on it. This was so good when she was newborn. Now that she's bigger, she can kind of hold herself up. So maybe when she was like three months onwards, we didn't need that anymore because she was bigger and chunkier so she could kind of help me feed her. But when she was little, it was really hard because she was like teeny tiny. So having that really helped. If you already have a pregnancy pillow, you can just use that. If you don't want to buy anything, you can just prop yourself up with pillows and that works just as well. Let's talk sleep. It's up to you where and how you want your baby to sleep. We decided to have her in a next to me bed, so we chose the Lua bedside crib. I've done another review for you here in case you want to check it out. And that one came with a changing mat, I'm not too sure why. Um, the mattress, a mattress protector, and then two fitted sheets. So that is just one whole unit and we don't need to do anything with that. In terms of getting them to sleep, we use a white noise machine. So this is one of them. We have a few. This is the snooze cloud. We also have like the Tommy Tippy Owl one. Um, we also use the white noise on our phone. So if you don't want to buy anything like that, you can just use the white noise on your phone or like you can talk to Alexa if you have one. We don't have one, so we, we don't. We just use our phone. Um, <laughs> but that works just as well. In terms of what to put your baby in, when our baby was newborn, it was February and it was in the winter and it was really, really cold because, you know, it's the UK. So we just used two blankets and swaddled her. We have a cellular blanket and a thicker blanket. We put one inside the other and she was just in a nappy and we swaddled her. So she was really, really warm, really tight and felt that like smush in. So it made her sleep really, really well. She slept like that for quite a few weeks and then after a while she kicked herself out of it and then we'd wake up and she'd be like kicking her arms and legs and wouldn't be in the swaddle anymore. And that is when we transitioned to the sleeping bag. So kind of newborn stage going on a little bit. I can't remember exactly when she transitioned, maybe like a month. So we got these um, sleeping bags and just their little arms stick out, their heads stick out, but the rest of their body is inside. This is for zero to three months, and then they're just different thicknesses depending on the time of year. And she would still wear her clothes underneath this, because again, it was February, um, but we would just put her in that and her other clothes. So I would highly recommend swaddling, and then when they break free from the swaddle, there's a few different sleep options. You can tuck a blanket around the side of the bed. For us, it didn't really work. She's too much of a regular, regular so we prefer sleeping bags. And there's a few different types of these. You can get the ones that have the fixed arms because they just sleep like this anyway, so that's ridiculous and cute. Um, I would maybe try that one next time just for the funsies, um, but this one currently works. Dressing your baby, this is a really fun one. It depends heavily on the time of year and what your house is like, where you live, etc., as to what you're actually gonna want to put your baby in. We chose for the first, I think, two weeks or so just to keep her in a swaddle. Um, we kept her just in a nappy and then in those two blankets, as I mentioned earlier, for the swaddle, and she loved it, and that is what she lived in. If we went out of the house, obviously we'd dress her, but in the house, that is pretty much what she wore um, because she would be swaddled at night time. 
if she wasn't swaddled, she would pretty much always guaranteed wear one of these. These are so cute and teeny tiny. They are ridiculous because she's so much bigger than this now. So I like these ones because they're covered at the feet and then they also have these little turnover bits on the hands. We've used the turnover bits a little bit. She doesn't like having her hands restricted, but every so often it oddly calms her down. So we do use those bits. When you're buying these, there are two things. Firstly, buy poppers when they're newborn. I love, 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 love the zip ones now that she's five and a half months, but when she was a newborn, she was so tucked up that it was a nightmare trying to put her in one of the zip ones. It just didn't work because her feet were up by her chest. Whereas these popper ones, as much as they take longer to pop, these ones for us, these ones were the best when she was newborn. Now, I would say go for the zip ones when, when they're older. The other thing is that if you get a popper one, some of them come with one popper that's a different color to the rest. So hopefully you can see that is a different color to the rest of the poppers. And that is just so that you can see that this one matches up with the other one that's the same color, which is here. So you know definitely these two go together. Now that sounds really stupid and really obvious, but when you're trying to figure it out, sometimes these outfits just don't make sense. So if you can get some with the poppers that match, that will really, really help you out. This is just an example of one that doesn't match. Here you can see that they're all the same color. Like, I love this one. This one's super, super, super cute. But having one where the poppers match just saves you a little bit of time and a little bit of effort. So the swaddles or these little outfits, that's what she wore pretty much all the time. We also bought these little singlet things, these little leotards. Um, she did wear these on occasion, but it, it was mostly these that she wore at first. And as she got a little bit older, we would transition her into these ones because it started to get a bit warmer in the house. But again, pick and choose or buy a selection of both. In terms of sizes, we went for newborn stuff which luckily lasted for six weeks but we also got a lot of zero to three month stuff and that lasted for us up until three months pretty much exactly it might be worth buying a few items in different sizes knowing that you can swaddle your baby when they're first born and then figure out the sizes so you don't have to waste too much money you might find that you have very nice people around you that just give you loads of clothes anyway so you don't need to buy too many bits um, but it might be nice to have something newborn and something zero to three and then when your baby's here, you can buy more stuff. Because it was winter, we also needed to buy some hats. We now have a summer hat for her because it's summer, but in the winter we had these little hats that we had to wear every single time she was out of the house because it was so chilly. We also bought her just one newborn jacket that she could wear. This one was a bit of a faff getting it off and on her because there is no stretch to it whatsoever. We've since bought some zero to three and three to six month stuff that are much like this, but much stretchier. So I would recommend going for something that's got a little bit of give because when they're newborn and their arms are like this, it's so hard to get them in, but my goodness, is it cute when they go in. This will always be the piece that reminds me of our little one when she was newborn. So I'm really happy we bought this despite the fact that it was so expensive and hard to wear. I'm still glad we bought it. <laughs> the other thing we bought were bibs. We used them from about a month onwards, but I actually would start using them a little bit sooner if I'd remembered that I had them because these are so useful for saving their outfits when they do spit up and not having to have the faff and hassle of trying to change them, clean them, etc. So um, bibs are really, really handy. And luckily the size, sizing, this one's zero to three months, but it still fits her now because it's, you know, I don't know how big their necks get. The other must have, of course, is a muslin. And when I say a muslin, I mean all the muslins you can get your hands on. We keep these in different rooms of the house. We have one in the bedroom, dining room, living room. We have one that we keep on the changing table. We have two in the changing bag. We have two in the car. We keep them everywhere and we use them all of the time because surprise spit ups happen all of the time. <laughs> like all of the time. So the other thing to think about is where on earth you want to put your baby and you might find that you already have somewhere to put them and you don't even know it yet. So we use the bassinet that came with the push chair and that can just go around the house. We also have the bassinet for the bedside crib comes off. We never actually use that because we already had the bassinet from the push chair. So we just use that. We also had the breastfeeding pillow. So when she was swaddled up, she could sit on the sofa with us in the pillow and we could obviously barricade her in so she wasn't going to roll anywhere not that she could roll because she was like this um but it meant she wasn't going to fall off the edge and that was really nice because we could take her around the house with us quite easily and quite quickly we also have a bouncer that she uses now that she's older but she didn't use it for maybe the first six weeks and she has a play mat that also we did use for tummy time at the beginning but she didn't like it so it's now come into its owners about three months so in terms of where to put the newborn for us the key was the bassinet and the breastfeeding pillow they have been lifesavers so if you think there is anything 
anything that I have forgotten to talk about or that you think you might need, let me know and I'll give you my opinion whether you want it or not, I'll give you my opinion on it. It might be that for us, it we didn't use it, we didn't need it, or that I just don't see it as an essential because there's a lot of things that you can get for free or different versions of instead. Either way, let me know. But hopefully this is the extensive list of everything that you're going to need for your newborn.